start it. Yeah, let's get started. All right, greetings, people inside the panel room and people inside of the internet. I am the totally radical Brian Batical, and this is. And I'm Joe the Typhoon. <laughs> uh, we, I have been streaming on Twitch since. When did I start? Oh my god, it was 2014? 2012? 2014? 2013? I think 2013 was when I first started. I didn't really get serious into it until like 2014. Um, and you just created your account yesterday? Yeah, yesterday morning. Yesterday? Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, just made it yesterday. So, um, but I have run many an idea by you because you understand the concept of video games and things like that. So, uh, we've been, you've been by my side through these adventures. Yes, I would say so. Okay, good. So that's kind of where where we come thro uh, from, and we're just gonna go to the basics of how to start your own stream. Um, so I made it yesterday, hoping to establish some form of metric for Brian here, and perhaps anybody who decides to follow this method. Um, in about 30 days, I'm gonna present my successes using this method to kind of just give a baseline as to what he's trying to teach. And if uh, we find it favorable, perhaps it'll just be a permanent thing we show. I like it. All right, cool. So what is Twitch? What is Twitch, Brian? Well, Twitch is a site that was created in 2011. It used to be originally Justin TV, which housed, uh, it was actually just people sitting there just on the webcams doing whatever they wanted to do. Some of them were playing games, some of them weren't, but then they kind of geared it towards Twitch. Uh, really became Twitch in like 2012, as we know it today, and it's just developed since then. We have like 2.2 million streamers, or uh, yeah, streamers a day broadcasting on Twitch. There are an average of like 15 million people watching a day on Twitch. So that is a huge number of people out there. Um, Average of like 41,000 people streaming at once, and uh, about an average of like 1.1 million people watching those 41,000 people. So there's a lot of people out there. This is one of the main sources of entertainment for a lot of people nowadays. Uh, about 20% of the traffic is actually based here in the U.S., which is uh, kind of interesting. It's we're the biggest country with 20%. Uh, following up with the uh, the next. Two biggest ones are actually Germany and Russia. Both account for like 6% of the traffic. And then behind them is Brazil and the UK. They're both about like a 5% of the traffic for Twitch. So we're the majority, but it is all over the world. I had somebody watch me from Sweden just the other day. Yeah? yeah. Did they chat with you? They did, they, they did. did, yeah. And then they had to go to sleep because it was like middle of the night there. And it was regular night here. But it was cool, it was cool. Uh, so we play games, we get interaction, that's the basic. I, I get this question asked a lot, because they're like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I play on Twitch, what's that? Uh, it's like YouTube, but, live. You can, yeah, but live, but you can, well, I mean, but you can do live YouTube now as well, so, oh. yeah, that's kind of a outdated yeah. statement. But anyway, so they have chat interaction, that's the main experience booster of Twitch. So, let's get into it. Move along. Moving along. So, equipment. You gotta have some basic equipment for streaming. We're kind of just uh, gonna go through a few of those. This is kind of the outline of what we're gonna be looking at here. So, first up is a microphone. Obviously, you need people to hear you. I mean, I've watched some streams where people don't have a microphone, and they're not the most entertaining of streams, but. This is the one I actually use right now. I, I got these pictures off Amazon uh, about a week ago, so those prices are pretty current. They do have sales and stuff for them. This is, like I said, my primary mic right now. This was not the first mic I started with when I started streaming. I used a uh, Blue Yeti Snowball, which was a, another nice mic. It's a little bit cheaper than this one, but it's uh, not as great of quality. That one was kind of purchased for our YouTube channel that we used to do. Uh, basically, you just put a mic on a table in front of a couch, and it's great for doing that. But this one is 
really more targeted toward a single person. There's a ton of accessories you can get for it. I personally just leave it on my desk. I have a uh, wind guard on top of it. It was like a $4 little piece of foam that goes specifically for it. A lot of people like to put it on a little crane. It's not necessary. I have mine sitting on my desk and I have no issues with it. Uh, but it's a really nice microphone and you can use it not just for streaming, you can use it for any kind of recording and it records at a very nice uh, high quality level. It's not the most expensive out there. It's in the, like the mid-range, upper mid ranges of uh, microphones. You, you have the same one? I believe I have the uh, the previous one you mentioned. The snowball. Yes. The round one. Yes. The, the ball. Yes. I okay, have, you have the ball. I have the ball. Um, yeah. I believe I got it on a um, sale through Amazon. The price was about 40% less than usual. Mm -hmm. So I just snatched it up knowing that something like this is upcoming. Right, yeah. And, and they do go on sale from here and there, or they can be packaged with different things. I actually remember they were packaging it with uh, the, the Blue Yeti with, I think it was one of the Assassin's Creed games, like a couple years ago. And it was like the same price, but you get Assassin's Creed for free. So uh, just keep an eye out on deals. Uh, camera, uh, this is the one I use right now, currently. Um, it does 1080p, but I actually go for the little option. It's kind of hard to see up there, uh, but it can do 720 at 60 frames per second. I prefer to do that because it's just me. Um, I, you know, obviously when you're using a webcam, it's a little bit smaller than the area resolution of the entire screen. So it really kind of doesn't matter if you're streaming at 1080p on it or not. So that's why I like going for the little bit lower resolution. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on in a couple of the other slides. Um, Logitech makes some great webcams, but you can use whatever. People use their phones, people use... Uh, camera on the PC. Camera on the PC, yeah. I mean, you can really use anything. Um, but we're gonna get into quality and things a little bit later. But this is the one that I use currently. So capture cards. Now, capture cards are needed if you don't want to just uh, capture something uh, on screen on a PC. This is one I use right here. It's not really the most popular option because a lot of people like to go external capture cards. This one here actually is cool because it has two HDMI inputs on it. Uh, one of them I use for your regular HDMI uh, consoles like your Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, anything that uses HDMI. But the other one is the important part which houses this beauty right here, this fantastic dongle. I love it so much. So with this here, you could actually plug in anything you could have those plugs for. Going like all the way back to like regular Nintendo. You can do RCA, you got S video, you got composite, you got any of those, and they go straight into the HDMI port and it just displays on your uh, monitor with the AVG uh, software, and I just captured that and it's fantastic. I love it so much. Uh, really, a, that was the purchasing point for my specific capture card was because it has this right here. Uh, but I, I mainly do older games. I like older games. I still own all the original systems. So it's more specific for just kind of me. But moving on, this is kind of the more popular choice for a uh, capture card. I know quite a few people that do use this. I have actually never used one of these. Um, but basically, it processes it. Uh, processes the input of the system. It's got an HDMI in, HDMI out, and it'll just plug into one of your video ports into your graphics card, and it'll also display a picture on your screen, so you just capture that. It's pretty pretty straightforward. It does all the processing in the little unit itself. Um, besides the HDMI cables, all it has is a power pack and plugs straight in. Really easy to use, and it's, they're pretty straightforward, but I, I like doing the older stuff, so it doesn't really fit my needs personally. So, moving on, uh, internet. So, internet can be kind of tricky when it comes to streaming, because most people don't think about upload speed when it comes to when you're purchasing your internet. Uh, I'll give a little story about recently when I had to deal with Spectrum, uh, I kept calling, I, I had to call, I think, four different texts out because my upload rate was only going two megabytes a second or something like that. And I, I, I buy the 300 <laughs> download, 20 upload uh, cable. 
and they're like, well, why does it matter? What do you need upload for? And the, the fourth tech they called out was like, oh man, that sucks. I mean, yeah, I stream on Twitch and this and that. He's like, oh man, you stream on Twitch? He's like, you really need your upload speed. Let me get on that. And he actually fixed it. He figured out there was like a problem with the node or whatever. But most people just don't get that you need a really good upload speed. Thankfully nowadays, uh, like obviously with a cable connection, it's shared with a, within an area. And so like DSL can be a little bit better option because it's a dedicated line. But your best option is actually going to be fiber because it has the same download and upload speed if you can do it. Um, like 100 download, 100 upload would be amazing. Like I'm sitting at 20. Three, I think since they fixed mine, I can uh, I can almost cap out the bit rate on Twitch right now though. So uh, the fiber is ideal, like I said. But if you get like you can, I, I mean, I started streaming at like two, three, four, something like that. But it was kind of garbage quality. So the higher you can get, obviously, the better. But like a good solid starting point would be like five upload. Would be a good good spark, good, good good start. As long as your provider can offer it. Uh, if you are in the situation where the only provider in your area is, example, cable or DSL, and you're blocked out from something beautiful like fiber, um, I don't know if waiting, but Brian's option is perhaps the best. Uh, making sure that the provider is supplying what they're offering, the upload speed that they uh, they are guaranteeing. If you can get it through them, that's what you're gonna have to do. But uh, the moment you can step up to something better, if it's offered, go ahead and take it. Um, I'm in that block of there's only one provider, they don't offer fiber. So I gotta make sure that the speeds they offer are the speeds they're giving me. I mean, I, I am in an area that's closer to more major metropolitan stuff and I don't even get fiber yet. And I know Orlando's been kind of a big, you know, we're, well, we both live in Orlando. I see more trees than he does. Yeah, he kind of lives in the woods of Orlando. Mm -hmm. I live more in Orlando. But yeah, we still didn't have fiber over there. I know at and is like going through trying to uh, do it. I know a lot of people up north, especially, like they like the Verizon Fios fiber. It's a really popular connection for a lot of people, but we don't get it offered in Orlando. So, sucks to be us. Stay on it if if you got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so a friend of mine, Caleb Hart 42, he's a speed runner. Uh, he has this lovely setup right here. He's got uh, some actual, like some, another good point is lighting. Lighting's important, uh, especially if you're doing a higher uh, FPS, like a 60 FPS, it, you really need a better lighting setup. I just have a, a light just pointed straight at me. It's kind of unbearable when you're sitting there, but he's got a, like a nice diffuse and everything. You can see he has, uh, a CRT set up in the center there because he plays the classic games. Um, he also uses one of those special capture cards, kind of like I use. It's all internal with the, um, he plugs the Super Nintendo and stuff straight into that. But he also has multiple monitors. Show you guys kind of what my setup is. Four multiple monitors in a little bit. Uh, but first we want to talk about some streaming software. There's a couple options out there for streaming software. Uh, not a whole lot, but the main one is OBS. It's an open source freeware, so anybody can work on it. They, you can add on it. It's, uh, it's, it's like probably 95% used by most streamers. And Streamlabs OBS is actually, it's the same thing, does the same, uh, same capabilities, but Streamlabs, which is another site we're going to get into a little bit later with some additional functions, uh, they've integrated those into the OBS software, and it, it's, I switched over to it, and it's amazing. If you have OBS right now, uh, it imports all your settings, all your scenes when you go over to Streamlabs OBS, and it's, it's kind of amazing. Uh, XSplit is another one. Nobody uses it. S straight up, nobody, nobody uses it. Uh, I don't really have much to say about it, but nobody uses it. It's there. It's there. <laughs> it's, it's your second option. It's like Linux, but not. <laughs> it's it's use, there. Use less than Linux. <laughs> so you can also uh, stream straight from your console. A lot of people have been doing that. A lot of people have done that. There's some pros and cons to that, though. Uh, pros, it's 
really easy to set up because you don't do anything except hit a button on your PlayStation, your Xbox, stream to, to Twitch, you type in your information, does everything for you. And you can sit on your couch and do it, but you get a lot less personalization with it, which is kind of the big thing. Um, no camera, you can use the mic, like a headset or whatever, but it's not really as effective as obviously doing it on the, um, uh, having all that extra stuff. I mean, yeah, there are big streamers like Lyric out there, he doesn't have a camera, but he's not streaming from his console either, so. Um, it just kind of makes it look cheaper streaming it from a console, so. It's kind of all there is about that. And live streaming, so. We're live streaming right now, as you can see, right here. The lovely Candace is uh, live streaming us. So it is kind of a different beast than your normal streaming setup. It takes different, uh, different equipment, really. Uh, one major thing is getting the signal everywhere. So I am actually bumming the Ocean Center's free Wi-Fi right now to kind of broadcast this. but. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Um, but the other option, and more sensible option, is obviously you're not going to get a signal everywhere on your phone. So the mobile Wi-Fi is a great little option. I actually used one of these in Japan when I went to travel over there, and it, it's, it was super awesome. It um, just generates a Wi-Fi signal wherever you're at. It uses the local uh, phone companies and just kind of makes a hotspot. Most of our phones and stuff do hotspots now, so we're kind of familiar with it. Um, but you can just carry one of those in your back pocket and you always have a consistent signal. Another thing is a stabilizer. You don't want a shaky screen walking around doing whatever you're doing. So uh, this is the gimbal stabilizer. It actually is super awesome. I, uh, I took it to Disney one day and uh, I think you bought it on the spot, didn't you? I sure did. Yeah, so he went on Amazon uh, directly after holding mine in his hand and purchased one for himself. Um, talking about the stabilizer. The stabilizer, yes, yes, obviously the stabilizer. Yeah, I don't want you to touch my other sticks. Uh, just, just my stabilizer. Well done. Thank you. <clears throat> so, it is a magnificent device. I, uh, I have used it for a bunch of other projects other than uh, just streaming. It provides like the smoothest, just like you can walk down a hall and it just glides. It's fantastic. Uh, a lot of the, it, it actually took me a while to figure out what a lot of the top streamers used, uh, live streamers used, uh, to get such a nice crisp image all the time. And this is really, a, and it's compatible with almost everything. You just stick any rectangular device in there and it works. Like I, I got my iPhone 8 in there right now. So what's in a name? Um, I know the last panel in here kind of touched on similar branding and things like that. Mm. Um, I can talk about mine real quick. So, like I said, I'm the totally radical Brian Badical, as you can see right there. Um, that was actually my professional wrestling name. I used to do pro wrestling. Uh, you can Google me, Brian Badical. It'll show up. Uh, and so I kind of had a pre-established gimmick already in logo and merchandising and kind of things like that. So um, that was kind of easy for me to integrate that into Twitch and things like that. Um, some cool things you can do are, as you can see, like stickers. Very easy advertising to do. Uh, we can do, uh, one thing I really liked that I saw online somebody did was wristbands. We got some wristbands right here. Make sure you grab one of those before you guys leave. It says uh, Brian Batical on the outside and on the inside it's got the Twitch address. So a lot of people give out business cards and stuff. I give out wristbands. And you can find all of my uh, social media and everything on my Twitch page. It's all about interconnecting, which we're going to touch on a little bit later. Uh, so merchandising. Uh, also, Candace is modeling my uh, new Brian Batical t-shirt designed by Sticker Dork. It's uh, fancy and metallic and shiny. So that's cool. Uh, one thing you can do uh, if you don't want to go out on a weird limb or anything like that, when you just want to get normal stuff like a, a mug or a t-shirt, Streamlabs actually offers a store that you can just upload images to and they'll put it on the, the shirts and stuff for you. They handle all the back, uh, back end work for that. It's really easy to do and it gives an option to people. Even You can buy the stuff yourself. And, you know, just, uh, it's all about promotion. It's all about promotion. 
um, logos. You can have uh, designers design them for you if you know artists, friends, things like that. And uh, another great site for that in particular is called Fiverr. It is a site that they design everything. It's like freelance artists. It's uh, Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can go there and it's, it's such a huge market now, the, the Twitch community. Like I said, you heard those numbers before. Millions of streamers uh, needing logos, needing uh, little uh, emotes and things like that. This site has blown up with like Twitch specific stuff, like layouts, which uh, I actually got my layout from Fiverr. I had a guy design it, and you will see that here in a few slides. Um, <clears throat> but the, it's all over the world. Like the guy that did, uh, I had a guy do a, sign, a sound bite for me. He li lived in Peru. So it's all over the world. It's, it's super affordable, super, uh, super cheap, and good quality stuff. We're gonna, I think, attempt to maybe outsource. For your stuff. Sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. We gotta work on that for you. Um, but I mean, also, if you have artist friends or things like that, have them help you come up with a design, things like that. Uh, and, and these things don't show up overnight. You really have to work at it. So Twitch gimmicks. This is kind of like an overview of who you're gonna see on Twitch. You know, uh, a lot of people fall in these categories. Some people don't, though. Uh, main one, top one, uh, pro gamers. So like, that'd be like your major league gamers, speedrunners, uh, you know, the championship players, things like that. Uh, they're gonna be out there uh, either practicing or doing their tournaments, you know, like, uh, like these guys here. Uh, so that's a really big category out there. there. There's been celebrities that have transitioned to Twitch. They've uh, jumped on like Dead Mouse. Like he, he streams a lot, he plays a lot of like CSGO. Ooh. Yeah, like I was like, he's, he doesn't wear the head though. I wish he wore the head. Send him a message. Yeah, I should. Um, I don't even think, yeah. I did. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I saw Fred Durst playing like Call of Duty one time. Yeah, like I, they just, they, they'll pop on there and they'll just tweet it out or whatever. Uh, I mean, Drake playing uh, Fortnite with Ninja. Celebrity playing out there. That helped uh, Ninja out a little bit. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about him in a little bit too. Because um, he's in his kind of own magical category. And uh, so <laughs> the next category, cam hose. You know? uh, so interesting fact, 81.5% of the Twitch viewers are males. So, cam hose, that's a big audience to appeal to. So, I know Twitch has their agreements and everything that kind of suppress a lot of that, which is good, because we don't want to have this turn into a... A nice face is a nice face. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, actually, 55% of those 80, uh, 81.5% people, they're aged between 18 and 34. So, young males. So, yeah. I think that's all we need to say about that category. Uh, so, variety streamers, that's kind of like what I do. Um, I play everything. I don't really have time to sit and play games on my own like anymore. I work a full-time job. Twitch is kind of like my side thing, and I want to make it my full-time thing, but just time restraints and everything like that. Uh, I play old stuff. I play new stuff, but pretty much I don't play a lot of games off-stream, so I play everything on there. Um, it's fun to experience the new stuff and the old stuff uh, with people. Um, a lot of variety streamers out there kind of a lot of people do variety, so. Um, and then big personality, it's, it's kind of those people that, it doesn't matter what they're playing, you're gonna watch them anyway. Like, they got that good, like, people skills. They have the, uh, like, like you said, they, they can be playing Barbie Adventure and you're gonna watch them. You ever play Barbie Adventure? I didn't know that was a game. Yeah, it's a game. Lyric uses it a lot when he doesn't have a game that he's streaming. So, Barbie Adventure is like, top on Twitch a lot. Because of one guy? Yeah, because of Larry. He's got like 18,000 people watching. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. So Barbie Adventures up there a lot. So these are kind of some things here that we're going to talk about to help you stand out on Twitch. So first one, layout. I took this little screenshot. Uh, I actually had one of my viewers do it for me. Um, while I was streaming, uh, Diablo 3, the new season had just come out. 
And then obviously, it's a little dark in the projector there, but um, as you can see down in the bottom, bottom row, right in the middle, that's my stream. So there's a couple, uh, couple things there I'd like to point out. As you can see, everybody else, it's all dark. It's, uh, some people have some layouts, some don't. Um, it all looks the same. It all looks the same, yeah, look at it. I mean, it's, it's some, some dudes have floating heads, a lot of them are just boxes. But if you get down to my setup, which, you know what, we'll, we'll go to this and come back to that other one. Uh, so this is my layout here. One thing I feel like is super important is to have your name on it, no matter what. Because if somebody takes a screenshot, takes a clip, does anything for it, they don't have to ask, who is that guy? Because it says it right there. I also like to put my social media tags up there. You can see uh, my Instagram and my Twitter, uh, the Prime Badical, and then the YouTube is Two Bad Dudes Gaming, which uh, kind of old. I haven't updated that one in a while. But also things like uh, having your last follower up there, uh, your last donator. People love to see their names on a screen on the internet. Boggles my mind, but they do. So. They will pay you money <laughs> to put your screen or their name up on your screen. Um, obviously, there on the left we have a little. I like it. It's, it's called a, a bit boss. People donate bits. They get hit points. Other people donate. It subtracts their uh, HP until they die, and they get a new new little boss. It's kind of they're really cool. Uh, below that we got the bit cup, where the bits flow if into and sometimes overflow with. My cup overfloweth sometimes. It takes a lot of bits to do that. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I've seen it. It's, it's magical. And then, obviously, down there, uh, having your last subscriber. Subscribers are super important. We'll talk about those a little bit later. And then, uh, down there, sub goals. It uh, kind of just goes over what uh, I'm looking at for my subscribers. And I'm playing Bloodstained. Have you played Bloodstained? It's such a good game. I have not. Oh, my God such a good game. Okay, so this is kind of my setup. On the right hand screen, it's uh, so right down the middle, this is my two monitors. They're the same resolution. On the right side of the screen, I usually full screen my game. On the left side, it is a little bit hard to see on that projector again, but uh, on top there is my Streamlabs OBS, as you can see. It's got everything I need to edit anything on the fly if I want to. And then also, right next to that, that really long one, the white one, that's my chat. So Streamlabs does integrate chat into it, but I like this one. It's called Chatty, and it's, uh, it's just a little Java file. It actually tells you when people enter and leave your chat, which is something that a lot of other ones do not do. Uh, I really like it a whole lot, so it's, uh, it's really useful to see who's in your chat and who's leaving your chat. Um, I like calling out lurkers. That's really fun. I've uh, turned a lot of lurkers into consistent viewers because of doing that. Some people just get scared and leave, but eh, it's still fun to do. And then right below that, I have my uh, Twitch dashboard displayed. It kind of gives me some information that the Streamlabs doesn't. But that's just generically like behind the scenes, what I'm looking at while I'm streaming. So alerts, another little uh, important detail. Again, people love seeing their name on the screen, so uh, that one was a little bit too long to fit in my text box, but we had Lament for Ghouls sharing me some bits there. Uh, it pops up on the screen for a few seconds and then it goes away. I have uh, a nice little audio alert for it. I think it scared me, judging by the look on my face there. Oh, that's actually, that's also one thing I kind of want to touch on right here. Uh, so. Your background behind your camera can really tell you like your personality, right? So like I have some perlers back there. I got some of my old games. Uh, you can see over my shoulder, there's a Servbot, there's Sonic. Um, on the other side of me over there, I got a Dragon Quest slime. And so it kind of just gives people, you know, without having to say anything, kind of gives people an idea about me without, you know, like, oh, hey, you know, I have a lot of people comment about my slime. So it's pretty cool. Uh, just kind of like one of those things you can ex do extra. Like I know a lot of people like the green screen. It kind of like takes and just puts focus on you. But it, I really like 
the background behind the people. I always look for that for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why I do that, but I always look for when I'm watching people. So consistency. This is something I struggle with. Um, I think <laughs> I think maybe we both do. Um, so consistency is super important. I used to have, like when I was doing this on a very consistent basis, I would come home from work, change, and then jump online uh, almost every night, like six days of the week. I would have people sitting in my chat before I logged on because they knew I was gonna start at a certain time. Twitch can be like TV shows for people. They're, they're tuning in for their favorite person, their favorite channel, their favorite game, and they expect you to be there almost every night. So it, it puts a burden on the streamer, but it really helps you succeed. Um, the more people you can have do that, obviously, it's going to help your community grow, which we're going to talk about how important communities are in a little bit. And that's, that's really the main point of uh, getting that community, is to help you grow. Consistency. Get on it. Get on it. Okay. Hey, look at that, communities. So, Discord was probably the single best addition to a community that any, actually, man, it, like, it just blew everything up. It, it, it was amazing. So Discord kind of put together a bunch of things. It put together like the message board community. It put together uh, like people that used to use TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever to communicate. Everything is in Discord now. And what it does is it gives a place for people to go when you're not streaming. That's great. Because before, people used to have to go to your chat room and maybe somebody's there, maybe somebody's not. Discord gives you that message board uh, area to go to, to you know, interact with people. It's, it's, it's amazing, like you can just post pictures, you can do whatever the hell you want. It's awesome, I love Discord so much. Um, I don't use any other uh, voice program anymore. Uh, I mean, we were using it the other day. This is right. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it's great to use even just for non-stream things. It's, uh, it's awesome. You can do screen sharing. You can do, you know, uh, community calls. It's awesome. I love it so much. And then in-game communities is also really important. There's a guy I used to watch, I still watch, uh, Co Carnage. He actually, he only had like 200-something people when I started watching him. And he just kept playing all these multiplayer games, all these MMOs and things like that. And he's a really, like, positive guy. He, he's real respectful of everybody, and he kind of just congregates these similar-minded people to him. And they just went from game to game to game to game, but all these people kept getting added every single game they would go to. And so he built a community uh, just by going from different game to game, finding all these people. It's, it was really amazing. He's one of the top streamers on Twitch now, I think in the top 20-something. Uh, he averages like almost 18, 20,000 people now. And I was watching him when he had like 300. So uh, seeing that kind of growth is awesome. But the community is, is like I said before, it really drives your, your success, honestly. The more people there, that's what Twitch likes. So, uh, but it, it's not just about getting the numbers of the people. It's, it's you know, connecting to the people, having a good time with the people. It's not just numbers. Correct. Correct, all right, great. So, <clears throat> we're gonna do a little raffle on the stream. So if you guys wanna be in the raffle, you should totally log on to the stream right now. It's gonna be kinda awesome because we're gonna give away a gift card for $20 for your choice of system Actually, yeah, it'll be uh, do Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, Nintendo. So what we're gonna do is once you get into twitch.tv slash Radical, just go ahead and type Radicals Radical in the chat. And if you're watching on there, that means you guys too. You don't have to be here to win. We're doing it for everybody. And then, uh, obviously, I can't run my raffle program right this second, but as long as you type in uh, Batical is Radical, by the end of this, uh, this stream, you'll be entered to win. And then when I get home on Sunday, I will be picking the winner. I will message you through Twitch, 
and uh, we'll get you taken care of. So, yeah. Raffles are another great way to build a, build a base. Um, if you're having trouble with the signal, I know the signal in here sucks. You can do the OC Wi-Fi. That worked pretty well for me. So, again, just by the end of the stream, Radical's Radical in the chat. And then we'll get you, a, uh, get you entered into a $20 gift card raffle. And I'll do the, uh, I'll do the raffling on, on stream Sunday night. It'll be real fun. I'll put all the guys in there, and we'll run it, and it'll be awesome. So, it's all about earning that paper, right? That's what we all want to do. So there's a few ways to do that. <clears throat> so through Twitch, there's a, th this, this, is, this statistic kind of blew my mind. So there are only 27,000 partners and 150,000 affiliates. So that's like 175,000 people out of like, how many million? It was like, it was like, like, well that's, that's daily. Daily. Yeah, that's just daily. It's like we have they have uh, like 200 and something million registered streamers on Twitch and only 175,000 people are able to receive bits and receive subscribers. That number is crazy. So you're in like a super, super elite if you're in there. But the thing is, the, before the uh, affiliate program came out two, three years ago, two, three, like a little over two years ago, um, it was just the partners, and those were the only ones making money. You had to get donations from people, and that was the only way you could make money. Um, obviously, affiliates, uh, they don't get ad revenue on there, but they do get the ability to earn bits, which uh, people can earn for free by watching ads. It's really great. I love that aspect about Twitch. Uh, I actually had a uh, quite a few like younger viewers that you know still lived at home with their mom. They really wanted to help out the stream, and they could never really donate through PayPal or whatever in the early days. And so this was a great way for them to start uh, being able to help out the stream by just watching ads. It's awesome. And then obviously Twitch affiliates they get uh, half of the subscriber base. Um, Five dollars a month, they get two fifty, and partners get more than that. They get three dollars to three fifty, depending on that. Um, I know, like Ninja, for example, he gets like three fifty per subscriber. Uh, he had uh, two hundred and twenty-four thousand subscribers uh, like a couple months ago. So yeah, he's making stupid paper. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Stupid paper. Um, so, I was talking about subscribers, right? So Amazon Prime, since Amazon bought Twitch uh, three years ago, they added this great feature, Amazon Prime. You get one free subscriber per Prime account, and what that does is every month you can have somebody subscribe. So, what I do, I solicit myself at work. I work with a bunch of people. I work with like 1,200 people. And so I go around and say, hey, you got Amazon Prime? Hey, let me sign you up for Twitch. What's Twitch? It doesn't matter. Just make up this and give me your password. Don't use this password or anything else, and I will sign you up every month. So, yeah, I do actually do that. But anyway, so uh, Amazon Prime is kind of uh, given another outlet for people to earn money. It's really great. And then Gather. So Gather is a interesting little website that lets you play games and then once you meet certain criteria in these games like you know reach level 10 or whatever they give you money to donate to the streamer that you're playing for it sounds ridiculous but they make all this money after off of the ad advertising and stuff like that but uh, I've earned several hundred dollars through Gallery. Uh, just from having, you can play games for yourself as well, so if you're a smaller stream, you can still play these games and earn money for yourself. Uh, there was one game that gave out like $100 for reaching a certain uh, thing in, in one of the levels. It was ridiculous, and I totally did it. So, I totally made myself $100 by playing a video game. It was awesome. 
if you guys want any more information about Gather, I can I can hook you up with it. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird website to navigate still, but it, it is really awesome. I love it a lot. And then sponsorships. That's kind of a newer thing for Twitch. Uh, sponsorships have been out, uh, kind of going out and affecting more people recently. Uh, I know with partners, they actually have a, uh, what do they call it? It's a, a bounty board that they have these different companies say, hey, play my game for X amount of time, and then we will pay you uh, based on how many people view that game. Um, I actually had a sponsorship the other day where it was like, play Star Trek online. And I was like, all right, isn't that an old game? Oh, well, whatever. It's the Star Trek MMO that came out like 10 years ago. And uh, I played it and for an hour, and they gave me 20 bucks for playing it. So, I mean, sponsorships out there, and they're out there for every size channel, which is great now. Um, I wish they would uh, put the bounty boards out for the affiliates as well. Right now, uh, it's only for the partners, but that sponsorship I actually got through Gather as well. So, Gather's kind of uh, going into that realm too. Making contacts, this is how you make your channel grow on the next level. Obviously, the business world. Uh, part of my degree is actually in business, uh, part of my bachelor's, and I have used more of that marketing and, and business knowledge on my Twitch than I have in anything else in real world, uh, real world scenarios. So um, a lot of business psychology and things like that go into Twitch. So networking is kind of the same thing as it would for any business, anything. Um, you can network on Twitch, you can go to bigger, uh, bigger channels, talk to them, get to know people, and then, um, you know, if you're, if you're friendly, like, uh, like Caleb, he's hosted me quite a few times, he has thousands of people watching him, and so he dumps thousands of people on me, uh, just watching me out of nowhere. So, um, just hooking up on Twitch, really easy. Also, helping out the smaller streamers on Twitch too, like if somebody's small, uh, and then you have another little channel that you know you can help out. Um, one of my coworkers, usually what we do is he streams later than I do anyway because he works a later shift. What, I'll, what we'll do is I'll stream for a couple hours and then he'll start streaming when I stop and then all my people will just go over to his channel. You know, it's pretty, uh, you know, we're, we're all like-minded people and we all like the same kind of games and stuff like that. So it's, it's cool to help out other little channels as well. Um, local meetups is actually kind of interesting because we're going to have one here tomorrow. The uh, Orlando Twitch group is going to have a Twitch meetup meeting uh, in a room that I forgot to look up. But it's going to be either in this room or that room um, where you can meet a bunch of other local Twitch people. I've gone to several of their meetings. We had uh, uh, Gods and, or not Gods and Monsters, uh, Monster Arcade, Arcade Monsters. Yeah, Arcade Monsters. The ones that are in the main room right now, they actually had a Twitch meetup at their arcade. It was really cool. You get to meet a lot of uh, local streamers, networking, and stuff like that, so it's great. Um, you can join a team. Um, I Not quite a team as like the last guys were talking about uh, um, as far as like MLG teams or anything like that, but uh, there are other smaller teams on Twitch that you can uh, kind of join. Um, you have to be a partner to make a team, but you can have a, I don't know if there's a limit on, I don't think there's a limit on how many people you can have on a team on Twitch, which is kind of interesting. And what that'll do is you can click on a team name. Um, actually, I'm on a team. It's on the Twitch Orlando page. You click on the team and it'll show you everybody who's currently streaming on that page. So it's kind of cool. It'll uh, get like-minded people together again. And they're just talking to other people. I always wear like my wristband everywhere I go. You can attest to this. Nope. Yep. So uh, I, I go all everywhere, and if I see something that looks like they might watch Twitch or like video games or whatever, I say, "Hey, you, you like video games? You like Twitch?" And they're like, "Yeah." Uh, hey, check me out. You know, and just you know, word of mouth. Anywhere you go, talk yourself up. So creating an internet presence, it's really important to use all of your uh, realms of publicity. Really, um, you know. Put your streams over on YouTube. Um, use Twitter to your advantage. Use those hashtags. Use Instagram. Um, just tie them all together. Like that's that's the biggest thing. And I, I have 
I'm not, I was not a huge social media person to begin with. I'm still not, but uh, I, I really don't like Twitter. And I'm not a huge fan of Instagram, but like you have to use them. And uh, I've seen even kind of bigger streamers like Caleb was not an Instagram guy like at all. And he's been slowly kind of getting into the Instagram game, but he'll, he'll post stuff like food. Like it'll just be like, here, this is a meal I just made or, you know, whatever. And so it doesn't have to be video game related, but you want to tie everybody back together to you. So as long as you got the same name everywhere, uh, it's literally just about putting your name out as many spots as you can have it on the internet, which, you know, you, you want somebody to be able to Google your name and find you. So you Google Brian Batical, a lot of stuff's gonna show up. Like I, like I said, my old wrestling matches show up. Uh, my Twitter will show up. I get tagged in a bunch of pictures, so I, I get shown up everywhere. It's nice. When you can just walk up saying, yeah, you can Google me. Can they Google you? Yep. Well. I'm an elected official. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, you are. Okay, yeah, so they, you can be cool too. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, you guys got any questions for us? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys focus mostly on Twitch, or do you guys multicast at all? Would you suggest multicasting or not? So actually, the, in the terms and agreements for Twitch, um, if you're an affiliate or higher, you have to sign a different contract with them. And so if you, they have really big restrictions on uh, multicasting. And so it's uh, like you can't do, you know, the Facebook Live, and you can't, you can't even post a, a stream that you just did on YouTube until like think, three days later is the requirement. Okay. Yeah, and so it's it's really hard. Like with the other ones, I think you can. Like it, if you want to do like a Facebook Live and a YouTube Live at the same time, I think you can. I don't think they have those restrictions. But once you get to that level on Twitch, you aren't able to. Um, so they kind of get your exclusive rights for at least a little bit. Okay. I would say that if you're not at that level, do it. Because it affords you multiple avenues to put yourself out there. So like whatever it is you're doing on your stream, if you're live streaming, if you're walking around, if you're playing video games, um, it affords you that. So live stream Twitch, if you can do it at the same time, do it on YouTube if that's, if that's your thing. Same thing with Facebook. Um, like you were saying, when you do a live stream, edit the video, you know, take your raw form, polish it up, and then put your library on YouTube. Um, the, it all ties in with the same name and all avenues, and relate everything. So, example, if you're really into, let's say you love Street Fighter, all right, what, what is your stick? You know, you're gonna have to compete with views from Major League Gamers, the top guys, um, the creators, etc. So how do you separate yourself? Well, use all your avenues first and foremost, and then build up your your brand. What are you going to deliver? So <clears throat> the major league gamers, they're going to be like, okay, this is me playing, and this is me being excellent. What are they doing differently from each other? Is one answering your questions like, hey, I love your character, I'm struggling with this. Are they doing that? Or what is um, the you know even if they're talking to you or not uh, me personally like I pick Street Fighter because it's my favorite fighting game why <clears throat> the original two uh, you know Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Street Fighter uh, 3 Third Strike to me are like the masterpiece of fighting games 2D why it's all about screen control right so you're dictating space and that's how you beat the game you know vertical and horizontal space this is where I feel like all other fighting games fall apart. They don't understand that, they don't address that concept, and so they make up with either gratuitous violence or ridiculous costumes or whatever it is, just to draw, draw the person. So you, as the person, when you're streaming, you use that avenue. Okay, this is why I like this game, let me talk about why I like it, and then the people following you be like, oh, I like what he's saying. And then you take that raw form, put it on the, you know, polished form, and then relate everything. It's like, oh, I look at my t-shirt on Instagram, Twitter. You keep doing that, you know, following whatever. That avenue, that, that method would, I believe, gain you success. Now, when you get into the, the, uh, the levels of, what is it called? Affiliate. Affiliate, then you're gonna have to change up your game. You know, if it says, stream here three days later, you can post your, you know, polished version, 
that's still in your advantage. But the moment you get into, you cannot do that. You know, pay attention to what you're doing. That's all. That's all I would say. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, what is the uh, worst computer you've ever gotten to stream from, especially on console games? Because I'm a console gamer. Uh, I have a work laptop. But that's about it. But uh, what, 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 what's the how, how low can you go, or do I have to drop a couple of G's for a proper PC? Uh, no, actually, no. I think I could take this question. All right, so I am going to be streaming from a laptop. So my capture card will be the uh, separate one but, that I can connect from one to the other. I don't believe my machine was a couple of G's. It was. 800? It was, it was 800. I mean, you know. It's, it's a gaming laptop. Exactly. But it was like $800, I believe. But it's actually, one, it was one of the preferred, because I researched it for him. It was one of the preferred uh, gaming laptops for streamers. So, I mean, you can go out there and search for it. Um, like you could probably stream from, I want to say one of those Walmart desktop deals. Well, if, you're, if you really wanted to. Um, Go back, go back to the internet part. So if your upload speed is good, right? Oh yeah, I got five, so I'm good. Bam, bam. so you got five. So consider, you know, all right, stream uh, directly from your console. Start, start there. And then move on to, like, let's say when you do have, okay, you know what, I do like this PC, I'm gonna get this one. And then you do your investments there. Um, you know, you don't have to start perfect. Like, like yeah. this is a perfect uh, scenario. Okay, I'm gonna start today. I'm gonna buy all this equipment, and now I'm situated. Yeah, uh, I, I, I built up to all that that stuff too. Like, and you, and that's the great part about it is that, like, if you do see some income from it doing any of this, like, I, I told, like, I still tell my audience, like, I put almost all that income that I get back into my stream, like, either paying for like the upgraded internet or you know upgrading like some new monitors and things like that. I mean, you can you can build a like I built a PC last year. I think it was last year. Sounds right. Yeah, I think it was last. It was last fall. I built one, and it was like I think I think I went like nine hundred ish dollars. Um, I used the same monitors I had. I had two monitors, and but like like my um, my processing percentage used while streaming is only I think uh, like eight or nine percent now whereas before on my old computer it was uh, like 30 or 40 percent which was an older computer so um, but like if, if you're on the fence about doing it like like Javon said just uh, try it out on the on the console first see if it's like something you enjoy doing yeah you know and then piece it together little by little yeah consider it like what is your ultimate goal think of that as well like if you just want to earn that paper then consider okay i may must make these investments up front um you know for the terminology uh eat garbage now eat <laughs> eat great later you know just just take on that stress now while you're able to and then you know if you get to that point you'll be fine but if you know if you if your idea is like i would like to just kind of just i just want to network i just want to talk to people you know i would just want to engage people because you know for whatever reason i, I like this i want to talk to people about this because you know at work, I just talk about work, and then with these friends, I talk about this. But I love talking about, you know, let's say again, Street Fighter, fighting games. That's your only uh, goal, you know, streaming from your console with the mic. That's the start. But if you want uh, get engagement, you know, you have your PC up. You don't have to worry about the camera yet. You know, you just build up uh, what you need for what you're gonna do. Because, yeah. Yeah. You can you can even do some workarounds. So instead of having like two monitors. Just have yourself like a tablet set up next to you while you're while you're streaming on the on the console, yeah. you know, or or your laptop. Like you said, you can just have that open. You can and use I, your cell phone for the camera. Yeah, like just connect it. You can stream it directly, um, like with a live live streaming. Just you you you'll figure it out if you really want to do it. You'll be able to figure it out. Um, like the rig itself, if it if it can upload the video in a, in, a, in a timely fashion, you're gonna be fine. And then the other thing too is, if you see something another streamer is doing that you really like, like 
you know, you're like, man, this guy's sound sounds really good. Like, what what are you using for a mic? Like, I, I, I've asked that question a lot of times, you know, what capture card are you using? What, you know, and most people list that kind of stuff on their, on their channels. And so, uh, but like I said, there's always like different options and lower quality options for like every single um, aspect of, of the streaming process. Like you can go buy a garbage mic for like, you know, one of those ten dollar. You, you can know, use your cell phone mic. Yeah. 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 Just talking like I have cousins. They'll play a game and excuse me. They'll plug in their cell phone headset right into the controller. And I feel like that's that's just fine if that's all you need it for. Um, one of the, one of the things I, I I actually liked that he touched on was uh, your background. Like if you do start filming yourself. Um, there are those who green screen, so it's just them on top of like the game they're playing. And then there's those who it's just them and then the background is their floor because of the angle. That's not, you know, that's not appealing. So something like Brian where he's like, oh, look at all my stuff. You know, that's just building character for you without, you know, much effort on your part. So if your background is just something like, oh, here's my favorite paintings, music, whatever. And they're like, oh, hey, you know, something that they can engage with. That's just you know, a low-end solution for, like, high-end I mean, it doesn't even have to be video game related. It could be, like, I saw one guy who, he was sitting in front of his, like, wine collection. Like, he had a, a wall of wine behind him. And so, like, he's like, oh, yeah, like, I'm a part-time sommelier, or, you know, did I say that wrong? Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, you know, but, like, you know, and then people were asking him about his wine, you know? So it's it can really, literally be anything. It could be, like, like you said, paintings. It could be art. It could be, you know, a guitar. It could be... Because the, uh, what the... What the streamers stream varies from whatever you can think of, as long as it's legitimate, legal, etc. But when you're engaging your your audience, you know, just to touch on your previous question, every avenue you can access, you should try it. I mean, like you were saying, virtually everything you can use, it's just using the the equipment you got. Create the account, log in, and then start uh, supplying content. And when you're using like the technology you have, if you need to upgrade. I mean, I've tried to use tablets such as this for something simple like Skype and it just does not work, right? But once you go to, again, you know, I have the ability to get a laptop, gaming laptop specifically for streaming, you know, for a, what I consider an extremely decent price. But, you know, use Amazon, look at those sales like the Father's Day sales, Fourth of July sales, Black Friday sales. Everything, all the equipment you're going to want to find, you're going to find it or some variation of it at a decent price. And that's the magic of Amazon right there. Any real team, any retail, magic of Amazon. It's way for sales. <laughs> Stuff always goes on sale. Yeah. Black Friday, whatever. But Amazon has a, a one day delivery now? Yeah. Whew. What? It's awesome. Well, we want to thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us, both in person and on the internet. Um, if you want to follow us or whatever, there's our stuff. Yeah. You got anything? Is it just Battle? It's just yeah, it's just Battle. Well, it's just Battle for Battle here. I'm Joe the Typhoon. Brian Battle on Instagram, and yeah. I'm Super Joe on Instagram. Yeah. But like I said, you can find all of my social media on my Twitch. Interlink everything. Very important. Yeah. That's all I got. I guess me too. Okay, all right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.